فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters I wanted to address a very important topic This topic by unanimous decision of the scholars and the people of knowledge it is that it is the greatest thing which Allah has sent down from high above and there is nothing a believer can be said to him or there's nothing that a believer can be advised with greater than being told Allah is looking at him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the reason why I chose to speak about this topic is because of the Muslims, maybe those who may be come across as people of knowledge and people of understanding of the religion, sometimes forgetting this message, which is muraqabatullahi that Allah is observing them and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see them let alone the general mass who have less understanding of the religion. If the people who are meant to be the du'at, the people who are calling to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, upon them is that they take this understanding of muraqabatullahi greater than the general mass. Al-Allama Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti rahimahullah he said, فَقَدْ أَجْمَعَ الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يُنزِلْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ إِلَىٰ الْأَرْضِ واعظا اكبر ولا زاجرا اعظم من مراقبة الله من مراقبة الله والعلم وهي ان يلاحظ الانسان ان ربه جل وعلا رقيب عليه عالم بكل ما يخفي وما يعلن محمد الامين الشنقيطي رحمه الله he said the scholars unanimously agreed upon it is a disagreement amongst all scholars that Allah has not sent down from high above onto this earth a reminder greater and a warner bigger than knowing that Allah is observing you subhanahu wa ta'ala and having understanding that Allah has knowledge of everything which you are doing. Then Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah, he chose to define what muraqaba means. And he said, وَهِيَ أَنْ يُلَاحِظَ الْإِنسَانُ أن ربه جل وعلا رقيب عليه عالم بكل ما يخفي وما يعلن مراقبة means that you know and that you observe as a person that all of your movements and all of your doings that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is looking at you He knows every single thing whether it is something that you hide or whether it's something you do in public Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is observing you subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person, because he knows Allah, knows his movements, privately or publicly, he's consistently worried and concerned. Al-Allamah ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah, he said, when he spoke about what muraqaba meant, he said, Dawamu ilm al-abdi, وتيقنه بالطلاع الحق على ظاهره وباطنه فاستدامته لهذا العلم واليقين هي المراقبة He said it is that the slave is consistent His knowledge is always consistent The slave's knowledge is consistent on knowing by unwavering conviction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing him على ظاهره وباطنه Allah is observing what is inside him and what's in his heart. And Allah is observing what you're doing from the outer. فَاسْتِدَامَتُهُ لِهَذَا الْعِلْمِ وَالْيَقِينِ هِيَ الْمُرَاقَبَةِ The fact that you're consistent upon that understanding and that knowledge with unwavering conviction, that is what yaqeen is called. So yaqeen means consistency in your knowledge and certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing you, this is what muraqaba means, he says. Also Ibn al-Qayyim said, وَالْمُرَاقَبَةُ هِيَ التَّعَبُّدُ بِاسْمِهِ الرَّقِيبُ وَالْحَفِيظُ 
العليم السميع البصير فمن عقل هذه الأسماء وتعبد بمقتضاها حصلت له المراقبة والله أعلم ابن القيم says that مراقبة is you worship Allah with his name الرقيب his name الحفيظ his name العليم his name السميع his name البصير الرقيب is the one who is observing you you worshiping Allah on that name الحفيظ that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is protecting and he is de- he is documenting العليم knowledgeable one السميع the all hearer البصير the all seer فمن عقل هذه الأسماء ابن القيم said anyone who comprehends those names of Allah he understands them what they really mean وتعبد بمقتضاها and he worships Allah based on what those names mean حصلت له المراقبة you will then gain the station of مراقبة والله أعلم أن الله knows if you open the Quran today and you read it you will find so many verses that remind you and my you, you, that remind you and myself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking over us Allah is observing us my beloved brothers and sisters Allah says in the Quran وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ Verily we are the ones who created the human beings وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ And we know what his nafs whispers to him We know what your nafs is telling you We know it Allah is aware of it subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah knows it before you even do it. He knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then fear Allah when you're by yourself. Fear Allah when you're alone. Fear Allah when you're in that darkness. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala one who knows all of that which you're doing. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيد. ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. And every single thing, it will be documented. It will be written. And the day of judgment, Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, you will be accounted according to that. Qala Allah Ta'ala, Allah also says, this message of muraqaba, you find it in all of the places of the Qur'an, either by directly, or the Qur'an is indirectly uh, reminding you of muraqaba. Allah also says, from the verses which are direct, وَعْلَمُوا know, O people, know, أن الله يعلم that الله knows. What does he know? ما في أنفسكم الله knows what's in your nafs. Before you even do it. Before it even manifests on your limbs, Allah knows it. يعلم الله knows. ما في أنفسكم that which is in your nafs, Allah knows it. فحذروه be cautious. Be cautious. Be warned. He's one who knows it سبحانه وتعالى. Also Allah تبارك وتعالى he says فَلَنَقُصَّنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ بِعِلْمٍ وَمَا كُنَّا غَائِبِينَ The day of judgment you will be informed of this. And you will be told every single thing which you said and you did. And you will say مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا You will read your book. You will see every single statement, every action that you did. Those filthy speeches you put on Facebook, those filthy statements that you put on Twitter, those filthy statements that you uh, uploaded on Snapchat, every single thing will be placed in front of you. لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة. Allah will not leave a little and a lot. Everything is there. ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا. You will find everything you said and done in your face in front of you. ولا يظلم ربك أحد and Allah does not oppress. Allah does not oppress and he never will oppress subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَنَقُصَّنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ بِعِلْمٍ وَمَا كُنَّ غَائِبِينَ You will be told about what you did that day. And Allah was never absent. Allah was never away from seeing you do that. Rather, you made Allah the worst of ones who observe you. You hid that from everybody else. You stayed away from everybody else. You excluded yourself from everybody else. But you didn't do that to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and his angels. You allow them to watch you doing those filthy acts and those filthy doings. Watching those filthy things with the eyes He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gave you. The eyes that He wanted you subhanahu wa ta'ala to use for His remembrance, to recite His Quran, 
to, uh, to obey your parents with, to do things that are lawful and that which he loves. Rather, you chose to go against him with what he gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah also says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا تَكُونُ فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَتْلُوا مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّا عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيضُونَ فِيهِ وما يعزب عن ربك من مثقال ذرة في الأرض ولا في ولا في السماء. الله سيد توا سبحانه وتعالى. Every affairs and every doings that a person comes with, Allah سبحانه وتعالى is aware of it. إلا كنا عليكم شهودا إذ تفيضون فيه. When you were doing that act, Allah سبحانه وتعالى was witnessing it, was observing it. وَمَا يَعْزُبُ عَنْ رَبِّكَ مِنْ مِثْقَالَ A mustard seed will never be hidden from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything he knows. Rather, abshari abdullah, my beloved brothers and sisters, take this as a glad tidings. Allah knows it before you even intended to do it. He knows whilst you're doing it. He knows what you're going to do in the future. And he knows that if he allowed you to do this, whatever else you could have done, he knows it, even if it hasn't happened. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The poet, he said, إِذَا مَا خَلَوْتَ الدَّهْرَ يَوْمًا فَلَا تَقُلْ If you are by yourself, excluded, and you're not with anybody, فَلَا تَقُلْ Do not say, I'm by myself. فَلَا تَقُلْ خَلَوْتُ وَلَكِنْ قُلْ عَلَيَّ رَقِيبُ Don't say, I'm alone, I'm away from everybody else. But rather say, I'm being observed. observed. I'm never alone. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ يغفل ساعة and never think to yourself that Allah is heedless a split second. Never think that to yourself. ولا أن ما يخفى عليه يغيب and don't ever think to yourself whatever you are doing will be hidden from Him سبحانه وتعالى. Never think that to yourself. My beloved brothers and sisters, I want to tell you of a punishment for a people who thought to themselves, assumed that no one is seeing them. And they emerged into the sins and dwelled into the sins. And they showed no shyness to Allah wa ta'ala, the severe punishment that they will endure the day of judgment. And how Allah wa ta'ala will deal with them. Arhamur Rahimin, the most merciful one, chose to punish them like this. So we can all come to reality and understanding the severity of doing things privately thinking that we're, there, there's no one observing us. There's a hadith that Ibn Majah and others narrated. Sheikh Nasiruddin al-Albani, he authenticated it. And it is as he graded it, alayhi rahmatullah. This hadith is on the authority of Thoban. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَأَعْلَمَنَّ أَقْوَامًا مِّنْ أُمَّتِي يَأْتُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِحَسَنَاتٍ أَمْثَالِ جِيَالِ تِهَامَ بَيْضَاء the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that he knows a group of people from his ummah. They are going to come the day of judgment. These people are going to come the day of judgment with righteous actions that have filled the earth and they are as big and as large in quantity like the mountain of Tehama. It's nothing small. They have stacked rewards and good doings. And their actions are as big as the mountain of Tihama Bayda. So clear and so apparent their actions. And Allah The most merciful one, the kindest one. He chooses to do what? He makes it haba manthura. Allah nullifies it all. He takes it all away from this individual. Thawban, he said, Ya Rasulullah. O oh, Messenger of Allah, Sifhum Lana, Jallihim Lana, O oh, Messenger of Allah, describe these people for us. Tell us their description and what type of people are these individuals. And when the Sahabas would ask this question, it wasn't just a question for the moment so they can just pass time. It was a question that meant and it had a goal for them. And what was that, my beloved brothers and sisters? They wanted to stay away from whatever it was that was leading these individuals into the hellfire. Or that was bringing them destruction. Or that was nullifying their righteous actions. The Sahabas, they want to stay away from, away from that path. So they said, O Messenger of Allah. Tawban said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Sifhum lana, describe these people for us. How have these people earned? Um, how, did they, it, how did it happen to them that their righteous actions get nullified? All of it. The reason why Thoban asked this question is because at the beginning of the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Min ummati. I know a group of people from my ummah. And the ummah here the Prophet is referring to is ummatul ijabah and not ummatul da'wah. Ummatul ijabah are the ones who've accepted the message of Islam, the believers. So the Prophet is referring to believers because there's another riwayah that says when the Sahabas asked, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? The Prophet responded by saying, they are your brothers. Hum ikhwanukum, they are your brothers. Yusalluna, they pray the way you guys pray. Wa yasumuna, and they fast. Kama tasumuna, the way you fast. Wa lahumul haddu mila layl. And at night time, when everybody else is sleeping, they are people who stand up and they pray at night. Brothers, wallahi, ponder here and sisters. O oh, you who have chosen to sin behind closed doors and to commit the crime, and to watch filthy videos and listen to filthy music. Remember this. You don't even pray Qiyamul Layl. You don't even fast the month of Ramadan if it comes. Some of you, you don't even pray your five daily prayers. These individuals, they've come with righteous actions as large and as great as the mountain of Tahama. And they pray Qiyamul Layl. They are slaves who come with righteous actions. But the problem here is, وَلَكِنَّهُمْ إِذَا خَلَوْا the problem with these individuals were what? It's not the fact that they came with righteous actions, it's because when they were by themselves, when there was no one looking at them, they listened to things that Allah prohibited. They watched that which Allah wa ta prohibited. They did things that Allah prohibited. So because of that, When they are by themselves, when no one can see them, they forget that Allah wa Taala is Al-Raqib, Al-Hafiz, Al-Alim, Al-Sami' Al-Basir. They forgot He has those attributes and that those are His names. And because they chose to strip the curtain between them and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a noble companion, he said, I am shy. I am shy to do ghusl, standing up. So I am not seen. My aura is not shown. This is the type of people what they were. They were shy to expose themselves. They were shy publicly and they were shy privately. They will not go against Allah's command. How can your eyes find joy in watching things Allah has prohibited? How can your ears enjoy that which Allah has prohibited subhanahu wa ta'ala? A believer's nafs does not allow him to enjoy these things. His heart does not allow it. His eyes do not allow it. And his ears do not allow it. Because it's full with the remembrance and the taqwa of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. إِذَا خَلَوْ بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ انْتَهَكُوهَا but when they are by themselves, they fulfill the sins. My beloved brothers and sisters, the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he told us in a hadith which Bukhari and Muslim both narrated. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen, this is, your, this is in it your salvation. The questions that you always ask and that you're looking for answers, here it is. Min fi rasulillah, from the tongue and the mouth of the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. الَّذِي لَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ The one who does not speak from his own whims and desires, rather every single thing he says, it is from a revelation, high above, from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ خَبِيرٌ And no one will inform you the way you need things better than Allah and His Messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم The Messenger told us, سَبْعَةٌ يُضِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ Seven type of people. Allah is going to give them a shade. The day when there is no shade. The day when the sun is brought so close. People are sweating. The sweat turns into a river. 
Some people are drowning in it. Some people it is up to their throats. Some people up to their belly buttons. And, and some to their knees. And some people are drowning. The sun, the sun has been brought close. Destruction, pain and agony is what the people are suffering from. But there are seven types of people. Allah chooses to give them a shade from this sun, a creation of his that is going to destroy his other creation, the human beings. But there's seven types of people who get away. They get a shade that day. From those seven, my beloved brothers and sisters is, and this is the Baytul Qasid. This is the one I intend, which is Shabun, a youngster. نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى A young youth who grew up, who nurtured himself on the worshipping of Allah. The consistent worship of Allah is what he grew up on. He is consistently in worship of Allah. When he's sitting down alone, he doesn't forget to do his adhkar. When he is in public, he wants to benefit. He loves khayr. He's a person who benefits his time with ibadah. And he stays away from the things that Allah has prohibited. Shabun. Nasha'a fi ibadati rabbihi jalla wa'ala. He grew up. He nurtured himself in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also from the seven, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what? It is. وَرَجُلٌ أَيْمَانٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ a man whose heart is connected to the masjid. Whenever you go to the masjid, you see always that uncle in the masjid who's praying, who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one I want from this, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadati rabbihi jalla wa'ala. But there's also another one that needs to be pointed out, which also comes into the topic that we're speaking about, which is, Wa rajulun, a man, طَلَبَتْهُ امْرَأَةِ A woman requested from him haram. A woman called him for zina. This woman, she's not an ordinary woman. ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالِ She's a woman of status. So she's not a prostitute where you may reject her because you think she has illnesses, HIV or AIDS, and you say, get away from me. She's a woman of lineage, reputation. She's a famous artist, مثلاً. Or she's a daughter of a prince or a king. Jamal and she's beautiful. In other words, there's no worldly reason preventing you to fulfill your desires with her. The only purpose you rejected her was what? Lillah. Allah's sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was reputation and, and status and position, this woman has it. She's respected in the community, or father's respected in the community. She has a status and a rank. And she's beautiful. Your nafs is inclined to her, but you reject her. My beloved brothers and sisters, the woman came to this man and he's rejecting her. Not him running after her. It's not him saying to her, let's commit zina. وَرَجُلٌ أَيْمَانٌ طَلَبَتُهُ امْرَأَةٌ طَلَبَتُهُ She asked of him, امْرَأَةُ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٌ Ibn Al-Qayyim said, after he brought these seven types of people who are going to have the shade, the day of judgment. He said, I looked at each and every one of them. And I found one thing that which they have in common. All seven of them. All seven types of those. And the seven all have in common. Ibn al-Qayyim said that they imprisoned their shahwa. They governed their shahwa. They governed their desires. They had control over it. They fulfilled it in everything Allah made lawful. All seven of them, that is what made them prosperous. As Ibn al-Qayyim said, Abu Ali al-Daqqaq, he said, Man malika, shahwat, man malika shahwatahu fi hali shababihi sayyarahu allahu malikan fi hali kuhulatihi ka Yusuf alayhi salam. Anybody who gets control over his desires when he is young, when he is a youth, he makes sure that he protects his shahwa privately and publicly. He does not fulfill his shahwa in zina. He does not fulfill his shahwa in self-enjoyment. He doesn't. He governs himself by fulfilling it in that which Allah set him and his messenger, which is to fast or to get married. 
he protects himself. What will happen for him? Sayyarahu Allahu Malikan. Allah is going to make him a leader. When? Fi hali kuhulatihi, when he ages. When he reaches kuhula, which is the age where his beard comes out. And he, his beard is not bl it's black, it's not white yet. That is called kuhula. At that time, it is 40 to the age of 50. The person, he will become a leader. Ka Yusuf alayhi salam, like Nabiullah Yusuf. Allah said about him, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Anyone who comes with taqwa and he comes with patience, for verily Allah does not forsake the righteous actions of the righteous ones. Nabiullah Yusuf came with taqwa and he came with sabr from the woman who wanted to commit zina with him. Allah made him a leader. Nabiullah Yusuf became a leader. Ibn al-Qayyim said, سمعت شيخنا يقول ابن القيم said I heard my sheikh say referring to Ibn Taymiyyah جهاد النفس والهوى أعظم من جهاد الكفار والمنافقين the jihad of the nafs is greater and it is bigger than the jihad with the kuffar and the munafiqin فإنه لا يقدر على جهادهم because there is no one who can fight with the disbelievers and the hypocrite unless Unless he fights with his own whims and desires first. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, Sufyan al thawri Sufyan al thawri rahimahullah, he said, أَعْظَمُ النَّاسِ شَجَاعَةً The most courageous person is مَنْ يُخَالِفُ هَوَاهُ The one who opposes his desires, who goes against his desires. That is the most courageous person. That is the bravest person. Do you want to be a brave person? Do you want to be a courageous person? Then prove it to us by going against your desires. Then, and only then, are you a brave person. But a person who becomes a slave, who becomes a slave for his desires, claiming that he's a leader, or claiming that he's a brave person and courageous, your own nafs has you, has you as a slave. I remember one time, I saw a... Uh, 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 a branch manager from Tesco's asking for money while I was standing at a bank uh, as I was standing at an ATM and she told me that if I came on Monday it was on a Friday night or on a Saturday night one of the two that if I come to her on Monday in, the bra uh, in Tesco's she's going to give me back my money and she's drunk she's a branch manager She's become imprisoned for her own desires. What is her leadership benefited her? The truth is, أَعْضَمُ النَّاسِ شَجَاعَةً The most courageous person is مَنْ يُخَالِفُ هَوَاهُ The one who goes against his desires. I'm going to bring three stories to show you, my beloved brothers and sisters, the power and the strength and the quwah of knowing that Allah is observing you. Take the story of Mubarak ibn Waddah al-Hanzali. The father of Abdullah ibn Mubarak ibn Waddah al-Hamdali. Mubarak ibn Waddah, he used to have a master which he worked for. He was a slave. And his master one time asked him to go get him a pomegranate. He said, go get me the most juiciest, the most tastiest um, pomegranate in, my gar in the uh, garden. So he went to get him one. So he got it for him, and when the master had bit the pomegranate, he realized that it wasn't, for, uh, it wasn't what he requested for. He requested for one that was juicy and good. So he said to Mubarak ibn Wadah al-Handali, did I not order you to bring me um, a, a tasty pomegranate? So Mubarak responded by saying, all those ye years I worked in this garden, I've never eaten a fruit that's fell from a tree. So I wouldn't know which of those taste nice. So the master was gobsmacked. And he was mind boggled with what the answer of Mubarak gave. So he went and asked the jiran, the neighbors, and the people in the local the community, 
about this individual, Mubarak ibn Waddah al-Hanbali. And they told him, he is Afifu al-Batni wal-Lisan. Afifu al-Batni wal-Farj. This man, I'm al-Lisan. He's a man who safeguards his tongue. A man who safeguards his private part and his stomach. Nothing will go in there haram. He watches what he says and he pre prevents his desires. He's not known to fulfill his desires with women. When the master realized this, that he had a noble person in front of him, he came back to Mubarak and he said, Mubarak, I'm going to marry my daughter off. Who do you advise me to marry off to my daughter? And he said to him, the Christians and the Jews, they marry their daughters off based on dunya, based on money, based on reputation. But he said, the people of taqwa and iman, they marry their daughters off based on religion. Mubarak, when he said that, the master said, I see one in front of me and he married his daughter to Mubarak. Mubarak gave birth to who? Abdullah ibn Mubarak ibn Wadih al hanzali the great noble imam. Who's thiqatun thabt, hujja in hadith, a man of knowledge. Also, the story of Ar Ra'i, the shepherd, with who? Abdullah ibn Umar. And Abdullah ibn Umar came by and he asked him, he asked him if he could, he asked him if he could give them one of the sheep or one of the goats. And Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Abdullah ibn Umar, when he asked, the shepherd said to him, I can't. The master huh, hasn't given me permission for that. So, Abdullah ibn Umar said, then say to him, the master, when he asks you, where did that sheep go or that? Akalahu dhib. A wolf ate it. Then the Ra'i responded, and he spoke to uh, Abdullah, ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar by saying to him, Ain Allah, where does Allah stand in this? Where does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand in this? Abdullah ibn Mubarak's father, Mubarak ibn Waddah al hamdali he was what? He was a sahib al-Bustan. He was... No, he was a Haris of Bustan. He was a guard, guard. He used to look after and protect what? The garden for his master. And this man, who Abdullah ibn Umar, is talking to is a shepherd. Their muraqabatullahi, the salaf al salih. It went to the houses of the shepherds. And into the households of who? The guard, the, the, the uh, hurras of the basateen. Those who guard the, the uh, uh, gardens and parks, and, you see. And when a nation's their ra'i al ghanam is like this, and their haris of the basateen are like this, is when Allah gives them success and prosperity. All of these two stories, what do they have in common? Mubarak ibn Wadah al Hanbali. No one would have ever known if he took a fruit from the garden, but he chose not to. He chose not to. Why? Muraqabatullah. The Ra'i, the Ra'i could have given Abdullah ibn Umar what he wanted. But what prevented him? Muraqabatullah. And the three men, Thalathatu nafarin, mimman kana qablakum hatta awahum ul-mabitu ila ghalin, fadakhaluhu fanhadarat sakhratu min al-jabal, fasaddat alihim ul-ghar, faqalu innahu la yunjikum min hadhi sakhratu illa an tad'u Allah ta'ala bisari a'malikum. The three men who went into the cave. What were their story? Each, one, each and every one of them, their story was that Muraqabatullah is what prevented them from fulfilling their desires. And look how it helped them, this, this act of theirs. It helped them by taking them out of, the, out of the cave which they fell into. The Sha'ir, he said, the poet, he said, إِذَا مَا خَلَوْتَ بِرِيبَةٍ فِي ظُلْمَةٍ وَالنَّفْسُ دَاعِيَةٌ إِلَى الْعِسْيَانِ When you are in a dark place and your nafs is calling you to fulfill its desires, it's calling you to do haram. فَاسْتَحِي مِنْ نَظَرِ الْإِلَهِ وَقُلْ لَهَا Be shy of Allah's observation over you. And say to your nafs, يَا نَفْسِ إِنَّ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الظَّلَامَ يَرَانِي 
the one who created the darkness, he can see me. Say this to your nafs. Also another poet, he said, the reality of is, is the desires that you fulfilled and the haram which you have done has not really lasted for long. It is a desire where a sin was documented from it. And it's a desire where the destruction for it is a very long-lasting destruction. So there's no beauty in a desire that you fulfilled that is going to bring you the hellfire to be your abode. Anything which I have said that was wrong is for me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.